All right, so in this video, we're really gonna introduce organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is a huge part of the IB curriculum. Now, uh, the previous two years, you've talked, we've talked about chemical reactions that don't really involve organic compounds. Organic compounds are carbon-containing compounds. Now, organic chemistry is very, very important because most of the compounds that exist in our world are organic. So our medicines are organic. Uh, most of the reactions that happen inside of your body are going to be organic chemical reactions, which are different than the reactions that we've talked about. So anything, or when we just focus on the the study of carbon containing compounds we're talking about organic chemistry now there are some compounds that contain carbon but are not organic like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide anything with carbonate carbonates not going to be organic now most compounds will be organic if they contain carbon now uh, carbon because it has the ability to make four bonds can make all sorts of different structures and if they have all these different structures, then they have different properties. So they can be found in chains. They can also be found in rings like this. Now, just to kind of refresh you a little bit about bonding, because you are gonna to need to be able to draw a Lewis structure. Now, organic compounds are gonna contain the carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons, so typically it's going to make four bonds. In an organic compound, it always makes four bonds. Um, other things that you will find in most organic compounds would be hydrogen. It's always, you're always going to find hydrogen in it. Nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So really these are our main elements that we find in almost everything that exists in our world. Now hydrogen, when you draw a Lewis structure, it's only going to make one bond. So I should never see more than one bond coming from an H. So I should never see something like this. That does not happen. Hydrogen only makes one bond. Nitrogen will usually make three, and then oxygen will make two. All right, so there are different ways to show organic compounds. The structural formula, which is the Lewis structure, that's the one that you're most familiar with. So if I have C4H10, and I wanna draw that, well, it's a carbon. Uh, it's got multi-central atoms, so we're going to make a chain. Okay, and then we're going to draw the hydrogens around it. Now carbon can and will only make four bonds. So, all right, so when we connect the chain together, we're going to get this, and then we make our single bonds. All right, and then this would just be a structural formula or also it's a Lewis structure. Now, condensed is um, one of the most common ways that IB likes to show organic compounds. So what you do is you say, you look, you focus at the chain. Okay, so we have a carbon. Okay, that carbon is bonding to three hydrogens. So we write CH3. Then we go to the next carbon. Well, that carbon is bonding to two hydrogens. So it's CH2. Then we go to the next carbon. Well, again, it's bonding to two hydrogens, so we do that. And then the next carbon, and that one's bonding to three. So this would be a condensed structure, which is the most common thing that you're going to see on the papers. Molecular formula, well, that's a, you've done this before. It's just, it's the formula, and it shows the number of atoms that you actually have in that compound. So there's four carbons and 10 hydrogens. Empirical formula would be the smallest whole number ratio. So this is four and 10 that can be reduced. You can divide both those numbers by two. So C2, H5. That cannot be reduced, that's empirical. And skeletal. Skeletal is something that you're not going to be familiar with and it looks kind of trippy. It actually looks like this. Now, when you're looking at this, really what you're showing are the bonds you're not going to put in the hydrogens because in organic compounds, there is a lot of hydrogen. You don't want to draw all those out. This is really the lazy way to do this. And when we get more complex compounds and we get all these huge compounds, this is the way you're gonna to wanna to draw it. So right here, this is the beginning of my chain. That's a carbon and it's bonding to another carbon. 
which is bonding to another carbon, which is bonding to another carbon. So every time that you have a joint like that, that's a carbon, or at the end, that's a carbon. And you should know carbon's gonna make four bonds. So we don't show the hydrogens, so you should know, okay, this carbon, since it's bonding to this carbon, needs to bond to three more things, so three hydrogens. This carbon is bonding to this carbon and this one, so it's gonna be bonding to two hydrogens, but we just don't show that. And same thing here, and then at the end, this carbon is only bonding to this carbon, so there should be three hydrogens there. Now, if there's something else in your structure, like oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, you show that. You just do not show your hydrogens. Okay, so hydrocarbons. Okay, so these are the simplest class of organic compounds. So hydrocarbons are going to be carbon and hydrogen um, mostly. Okay, so we have saturated hydrocarbons and then we also have unsaturated hydrocarbons. Saturated car hydrocarbons are going to have all single carbon-carbon bonds. Unsaturated hydrocarbons are going to have, uh, there's going to be a double bond or a triple bond in there somewhere. So if I were to have, let's say that I have propane, Okay, so this would be a saturated hydrocarbon. There are no double or triple bonds. Each carbon is saturated with hydrogen. But then if I include a double bond or a triple bond, it is no longer going to be saturated. It will be unsaturated. So I would have this. And you can see you're not saturated with hydrogen anymore. And if you look at lipids, so if we look at it, the saturated fat versus a non-unsaturated fat, unsaturated fats have a double bond or a triple bond in there, and it actually makes it a little easier to break up. Okay, so the alkanes. The alkanes are going to be the ones with the single carbon-carbon bonds. So those are going to be saturated. Now, because the carbons are surrounded by four atoms, uh, they have a tetrahedral shape around each carbon. So the bonds or bond angles are going to have, or it's going to be a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Now, when we look at hybridization, it's going to be sp3 hybridized. Okay, so if you recall, the way that we determine hybridization is we count. So we look at the central atom, we're going to look at the carbon, one, two, three, four. There's four single bonds. Each single bond is a sigma bond. If you have a double bond, it's a sigma bond and a pi bond. If you have a triple bond, it's a sigma and two pi bonds. So we have four sigma bonds. Okay, I have zero lone pairs. Okay, so I need four places to put the electrons. So I can take an orbital from S, and I can take three more from the P. You can't take any more from the P because P has only three orbitals, S only has one, so it's sp3 hybridized. There is a video to review this on the bonding page too. All right, so normal alkanes um, are going to have these strands, these carbon-carbon chains. Now, they're not, even though we call them straight chains, they're not actually straight. They're going to be these zigzag patterns, and that's because of the bond angles. Now, normal alkanes are also called unbranched hydrocarbons, and I will show you what branching looks like in just a minute. Now, the general formula for an alkane is going to be the number of carbons. If you want to get the number of hydrogens, you just take that number of carbon, multiply by two, and then add two, and then that gives you the number of hydrogens. So let's say that I have um, five, five carbons. Well, five times two would give me 10. 10 plus two would give me 12. So that would be my formula. So just to kind of remind you, as we go out and we add more and more carbons, the molar mass is increasing. Well, when that happens, the boiling point and the 
melting point will change. It gets higher, and that's because the molecules are more attracted to each other when you've got a higher mass because you've got more polarizable electrons. Now, we have something called isomers. So just because I have four carbons and 10 hydrogens doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same thing every single time because technically I could take one of those carbons and then put them in the middle like this. This is called a branch. It's also called a substituent group. So this would be a branched compound. So even though they have the same exact formula, they have different properties. They are isomers of each other. These are structural isomers. So a structural isomer is going to be where you have the same exact molecular formula, but you have a different placement of the atoms. They're arranged in different ways. Because of this, and even though they have the same number of everything, they have completely different properties. They're different compounds. Okay, so just to show you what a branching, um, branching would look like in a condensed structure, because again, you're going to see these a lot. So whenever you write out the condensed structure, remember you're looking at the chain. Okay, carbon is bonding to three hydrogens here. That carbon's bonding to two. That carbon's bonding to two. That one's bonding to three. But if I'm looking at this one, this carbon is bonding to three. This carbon is bonding to an H, but it's also bonding to the CH3, which it's different than the H. So I'm gonna put that in parentheses. So branching is gonna be put into parentheses when you see that condensed structure. 